Vancouver Island to me is sort of one of the last wild places that I've ever visited. It's uh, got these beautiful mountains that run down the spine. We've got rivers and towering trees and just incredible fresh air. But what makes Vancouver Island truly special is the ocean. It's just, it's massive, it's beautiful, it holds so much life. You can get lost in, in the action of it, just the, the movement of the waves, the colors. There's a quote in biology about one thing being the source of everything making sense. And out here I picture the ocean as being that one thing that drives all of us. It's our food, it's our economy, it's our transportation. It's what keeps our air clean. It's where we go when we want to relax. It's everything. Everyone comes to the island, they're looking for the natural beauty. They want to see the incredible ecosystems of this place, and that is all dependent on a healthy and thriving ocean. Our business community understands that in order to thrive, they need to be giving back to the oceans. That it can't be a one-way relationship where they're taking from the oceans for their menus or they're taking from the oceans to drive visitors here. They know and they practice this as a reciprocal relationship, which is absolutely incredible and a model to be looked at and followed all around the world. I think I got lucky. I mean, this has kind of been a dream of mine is to have a 30 seat restaurant in the country uh, with a partner and have a little garden and have it community oriented. It's an ingredient driven restaurant. So we gather the ingredients and then create the dishes. Uh, it's really important for us to be able to use the best, freshest things that we can find. And here in Souk, we're so lucky because they're everywhere. My mandate here is to kind of use those underappreciated fish. We want to use the bycatch of things, and we want to support fishermen that are doing it on a smaller level. When you have a fisherman in your food community, then you have someone out there who's witnessing, preserving, and sustaining a way of life that is so important to Canadians on all our coasts. People are more than ever, I think, worried about the health consequences and the environmental consequences of the things they're eating. The more I can kind of show someone that something can be delicious that they've never heard of, you know, that's, that's one of the roles as chefs, is to be the one to show a better example, or maybe a different example. It's my firm belief from being in the tourism business for, for 30 years that introducing people to the environment that we have in Canada, particularly on, on the West Coast here, it will increase the amount of effort that, that our visitors will put into conservation when they return home. And I believe this very strongly, that First Nations people have something necessary to share with the world to get back into a sense of balance. Homoko people are called the people of the rapids. That's what Homoshku means. And that's the rapids between, from Campbell River all the way into Butte Inlet and all the islands in between. One of the things that was always reinforced when I was a kid was that, uh, you know, it's really shameful to be greedy and that goes back to the teachings and how you share. And I think that's what uh, helped us to maintain the different resources within the land that we, we couldn't take more than we needed. Being out on the water in the Salish Sea is just in itself a powerful experience. But seeing the salmon in the rivers and the bear feeding on the salmon, the, the circle of life really becomes front and center and, and it's, it's, a, it's a powerful, powerful experience for anybody that gets to see that.
The ocean up here is diverse and cold, which is great because cold water is thicker and full of oxygen and that's what allows for a lot of the biodiversity and richness out here. And although we sometimes view our ocean ecosystems as very powerful and strong, they're also very fragile. So the aquarium started, it's a new style of aquarium. Everything that we bring in, we return to the ocean. And we work to promote respect for local ecosystems and tell the stories of a lot of species that people wouldn't normally pay attention to. People get to touch things and smell things and see how animals behave and just have fun. I think that we protect what's in our, our sphere and what we can see. For people that don't live near the ocean, it's so easy to not see what they're flushing or throwing away. It, it leaves our realm and we don't really see how it impacts the world. So through our citizen science microplastic surveys, where we invite the public to come out and help us survey how much and what types of microplastics are affecting our coasts. We give people an opportunity to see that for the first time. There's a huge portion of animals that we work with in the aquarium that have never been studied. And we have these snapshots of tiny bits of information in field guides, but we don't actually know how often they breed or how long they live. And if we don't learn as a society about why those animals are important, then we will lose them and that will have larger ramifications for our ability to exist out here. Black Rock is a 132 room property. It was built specifically to blend into the surroundings. So when you come through those doors, you have floor to ceiling windows that open up to, to the Pacific, so your first view when you arrive is, is ocean. Uh, we see every day how impactful the ocean is to the community, um, to the people living here, and to the guests that come here, and that's important to, to keep the health and the, the impact that the ocean has. In our restaurant and lounge, we have eliminated single-use plastics. As well, we have always offered an organic seaweed um, skincare line in the Drift Spa, hand harvested by a family company just off the coastal waters of Souk, BC. For part of our ocean-friendly campaign with Surfrider, we offer a butt-out program. As well in the housekeeping department, we have biodegradable packaging for the amenities. And to replace the old linens, we actually donate to the SPCA for dog and cat beds. After 30 years of working in other people's kitchens, I had a chance to uh, go out on my own and, and kind of define uh, what I wanted to cook. We have an improvisational menu style. It's a little bit more feature driven and it's 100% driven by the bounty of Vancouver Island from the land and from the sea. When we opened Heartwood Kitchen, we decided right away that we weren't gonna have straws and toothpicks and little mints that are wrapped in plastic. And nobody nobody cares for that stuff. Like it's not a it's it's just not a big deal. So, you know, it's not just about the waste, it's about the whole chain of events. It's about uh, refusing something that didn't need to be manufactured in the first place. And now I think it should just be expected that we are doing whatever we can to buy as close from home from uh, really honorable, you know, morally strong purveyors where they are just as passionate about collecting these things and protecting them as we are about cooking them. I would argue that following more sustainable business practices is not more expensive. It's something that just makes business sense now. I'm absolutely hopeful that we can affect our oceans in a positive way. We just need to listen to nature and help nature do what it does best. So I am hopeful because nature knows what it's doing and people are starting to listen.
Right now, there is a level of awareness that we've never seen before in terms of, of fishing, in terms of development, climate change, plastic pollution. We want people to come here and to be inspired and provoked to make a difference so that when they're here, they're a steward of the coastline. And when they leave this place, they're going to take everything that they learned and implement it where they live. That is what we want. And that is what we need at this time on the planet. We need everyone to be coming together. You know, the more that the oceans thrive, the more that we are going to thrive together. I always say it's our own little corner of the world, but if everybody else started to do the same, started to respect the environment, then it means more. It, it's, it starts adding, adding up at some point. At the end of the day, having a beautiful piece of roasted salmon is something I want, you know, my children and my, my children's children to be able to experience. And we're not perfect and, and there's a lot to be done still. But I, I feel like um, we're all taking little stabs at this um, and, and it's starting to make a difference.